so that it can be taken to those who are not able to join can also view it in one minute we will be starting the lecture so i have uh, uh, the event is live streaming now we will go to the presentation proper okay now we are starting our presentation thanking the management and uh, the staff members of medical education department with uh, special thanks to uh, professor uh, mohammad atif sir for giving me this uh, opportunity to talk to all of you about self directed learning when i started the preparation of this topic of self directed learning i was uh, initially uh, perplexed because uh, what could be maximum self directed learning asking the person to go and read by himself so i was thinking that could be a very simple topic but why a professor is asking me to talk about it what is that i was thinking like this but when i went into the review of literature which is available about self directed learning i could understand the most interesting phenomena which is inside this particular arena so now i am going to take all of you in a beautiful journey across the field the reverberating field of medical education so we will proceed now yeah i would uh, ask the participants to please mute your mics all your mics please mute please put all your mics in mute mode okay we are starting bismillahir rahmanir rahim understanding self directed learning what is it self directed learning learning is of two types when we go walking with our father the father will be holding us and he will be taking us in the garden we will be playing very nicely but one particular stage will come when we will not be holding the hands of the father but we'll just touch it because we know what to do we know to walk so if he is given going to hold us we say don't hold us tightly i know how to walk so that is what is symbolically measured in this picture and uh, this is what we are going to see they are going to learn not alone but not with us what is this learning not alone but not with the teacher that is the beautiful world of self directed learning let us enter into it now what will happen when your teacher is not near you this is a scenario which is very frequently seen in hospital setups the students who are good at sdl will be able to tackle this particular situation where you are working in a hospital and there is nobody else to help you you are the single person there and there is a problem situation what to do your teacher is not near you this is a design how to go about in this particular scenario that requires the skill called sdl so the teacher is not always available with you simply saying self directed learning is the process in which individuals take the initiative to learn with or without the help of others to diagnose the learning needs to formulate the learning goals to identify the sources of learning to choose 
and implement the learning strategies and evaluate learning everything is done without the help or with the help of others so this is the definition of self directed learning it was given by novels in the year 1972 novels is one of the important pioneers who has worked on the neurobiology of self directed learning he has given lot of inputs to it so self directed learning is owes a lot of credit to m novels who uh, gave the concept in the year 1972 but sdl concept even in spite of being introduced in 1972 almost 50 years have passed but still the concept of sdl remains elusive it is hard to define the worth of sdl is not appreciated so this entire lecture is dedicated to make you understand the importance of sdl first you can see in this picture this picture was taken during the corona problem what has happened nobody is willing to go and uh, take the goats in a herd so at this point of time they were able to send uh, uh they were able to send one uh, robo dog this robo dog look like a goat it will go and all the goats will be walking along with it this is possible but for human beings you cannot be using robots to teach so human beings require a humanistic learning approach something is unique to human beings what is that humanistic approach is needed for human beings humans can learn only through their reaction to a situation they just cannot go blindly behind a concept so no good learning will happen when there is no self activity humans want primary responsibility for planning implementing and evaluating their learning needs humans love to choose what to learn what when to learn how to learn when to continue the learning and when to end the learning for example most of us have a problem in the usual uh, setup of education because the class is at 8 o'clock we have to be there at 8 o'clock that is the design but sdl is a concept where you choose your time you can read at evening 5 o'clock or evening 9 o'clock or in the middle of the night also you can get up and read nobody is going to ask you so sdl has the great flexibility embedded in the design adult learners the most beautiful concept of sdl is sdl is designed for all kinds of learning sdl is designed for all kinds of learning for computer engineers to everywhere people will learn but in medical field sdl is very important we will see why it is more important in medical field as we go down one by one in the slides we are basically adult learners when a student enters in the medical school he crosses his age of 18 almost and he becomes an adult so we are not in a school we are in a college so the adult learning is very important we should know what is adult learning the wonder of adult learning is adult learners will take the initiative without the or the help of a bit or without the help of others they want to diagnose their learning goals identify the resources and they want to they want to implement the strategies and evaluate the outcomes they want to have a role in the evaluation process also this is the wonder of adult learning malcolm novels this one defined this improved definition the the previous definition is 1972 this is 1975 he was refining it constantly so adult learning the the salient features i have put to you here art and science of helping adults learn andragogy so this is called when in college we used to do pedagogy this is andragogy and the need for increased cognitive processing because adults wants to process the information if i say how to go to riyadh if somebody says you just take this road and go they will not blindly accept it they'll say wait 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 i want to go to riyadh give me the map in which way to go first what will come first dawadmi will come or first another city will come which will come first you then you will understand if i go towards dawadmi i'll be going towards mecca but i want to go to to riyadh so which is the direction so you want to do a cognitive processing but if you ask a small child a school child and say go to the right it will go to the right so you cannot expect that thinking in an adult so adult wants cognitive processing experience is a living textbook so many things in a doctor learns out of experience the patient who dies right in front of your hands is the greatest textbook 
for example you do a surgery you lose a patient he dies in front of you now you learn the real surgery and then you will never do the mistake again in life this is the real living textbook is your experience as you get more experience you read bigger books that is the life life is a textbook the adults choose to learn systematic and sustained learning activities they want everything systematically they just don't don't want to barge in, uh, into into broken arenas they want everything to be systematically adults want to acquire desirable change to their knowledge to their attitude the values and skill everything they want to acquire a desirable change they want a complex interaction between psychological personal social and environmental factors these interactions everything will be played so teaching an adult is different from teaching a child so for teaching a adult sdl is a very important mode of teaching adult learners are unique previously i was saying to you what is the difference what is what do you mean by adult learning now i say it is a unique it is not a childhood age learning why they likes to be involved in planning evaluation of instruction if you are going to teach an adult about a concept he says let me give me a role i want to play i want to know what how, how you are going to plan if i am going to take a class today and uh, the students are there they say mustafa please help uh, please uh, let us design how we can do how we can segregate things they want to get involved that is adult learning adult experience including mistakes it provides basis for the learning activities interested to learn subjects with immediate impact on job or personal life for example if a group of doctors are in a place and they are asked to appear for an exam and they are say go and appear for this exam and you will get your knowledge benefited they may write the exam they may not write the exam but you, the exam is going to impact their job their salary then they will definitely go and write the exam so liking for problem centered rather than content oriented when you are a, when you when you are a kid if you are going to say uh, talk about uh, great britain they will just read everything about the great britain they don't have any problem in learning but when you ask an adult to learn about great britain he will ask which part of great britain do you want do you want me to learn about liverpool or do you want me to say about the city of london and why should i learn about great britain why i want to learn so this the problem centered approach is seen in an adult the adults like to have a continuous and critical reflection when they are reading they want to reflect okay what i read is i read something like this and why i read like they want to reflect and wants to self identify the resource and device if i am saying the class will be or if the the class will be in which portal they want to say take it in zoom or take it in lms take it in google meet because they have a, they want to identify the source and device they want they have a liking for it but for a child it is not like that today class will be in zoom everybody will come and sit in the zoom but for an adult if you ask him to come into the zoom he may not be comfortable he said i am not going to come into zoom i want google meet that is better so they will be trying to argue for it so that is the self identification of the resource and the device is seen in the adults they design their own strategies for using resources to achieve objectives many times i used to say to the students go to the library the central library is just a few bricks away you can go there and read but they say doctor i don't want to sit in the library i have the same book i'll sit in my home and read so they designing use resources they have their own ideas we cannot push anything on them the learning in adults is different from children how they value learning they do self evaluation self monitoring it was uh, it was suggested by bol here in 1997 and garrison in 1997 independent and self directed and accumulated experience and integrating the learning with the daily practice for example a surgeon will read few points from your uh, textbook of surgery but most of the surgical procedures he learns out of doing the surgeries and observing the surgery done by other good doctors and bad doctors when he observes those surgery he will be able to do it better so increase interest in immediate problem centered approach that is very important adults wants to learn problem immediately what is a problem i want to learn about it interest in subject centered ones will be less this is very beautiful so many times when you are talking with the adults you they want their crisp points they don't want to beat around the bush they don't have time for it they don't have the mind for it so they want to be motivated to learn by internal drives rather than by external ones you say to them read they say okay i will read when i want to read so that is the concept of adult learning 
so neurophysiological demands of the adult brain now so far we are seeing some philosophically we were seeing things now let us see the real neurophysiology of the human brain they establish effective learning climate reels they want to feel increase more safe that is very important if, for example in pbl when we are discussing in pbl and when the pbl uh, teacher wants to be more authoritative we are barging into the discussion they are not comfortable they say doctor please be quiet we want to discuss we will we will make it slowly we will come out we want to warm up and then do it so do self management social setting and resources increase the comfortable environment expresses themselves if a teacher in a classroom is going to be very dominating and very angry looking the students are not going to be comfortable they will not express themselves so this kind of a, the the environment is going to see how much they express themselves many times you see adults if they don't like if they come to a meeting and they don't like the way the meeting is going on they just keep quiet and go away nothing they open their mouth so they are not opening their mouth they do they don't have any content to say no they have a lot of content to say they are not comfortable expressing it in the meeting so want to be responsible owners and managers of their own learning process they want to be their own manager of learning involved in planning learning methods and curriculum they want to trigger an internal motivation for example my interest in diabetes is enormous nowadays because i feel i am slowly getting into diabetes i slowly becoming the my i, I feel my urine output is more in the night time so now i am worried so what happens is i now have a deep interest in studying about diabetes because i am directly involved in it i want to learn about it for so many years my interest and these years my interest is different so they want to accept responsibility for their own learning formulate own learning methods so again the same thing few more we can add to the neurophysiological things they think dialectically and contextually what is the point what do you want to say when we are saying so many things they say doctor what is the real give me in one sentence they seek the embedded logic for example if i used to say the central nervous system is located in the central part of the human body then they say okay it is in the central part so what is the peripheral part is that the peripheral nervous system very simple the embedded logic if this is central the other has to be peripheral simple they wants to apply the working intelligence in this they want to have a common sense in it and forms opinions judgments based on existing cognitive framework based upon their previous ideas they want to give some ideas and input so when we are learning something new already what we have learned will have an impact on it nothing is new for a child the brain is free you can put everything into it but for an adult already so many contents are inside if you want to put something the what is already in the core will try to influence this who is the best wife or a mother this is for a, for a, for a very uh, deep introspecting things i put this like this part if you ask an adult who is a who is best a wife or a mother or, or a mother that's a deep question and an adult only can answer this the adult brain only knows the problems of deciding the answer married man knows about it much better adult learning they design their own strategies for using the resources self uh, critical reflection self evaluation they accept responsibility for their learning they say we will do it okay so the three goals of learning are increase the learner's ability sdl will actually increase the ability of the learner it causes transformational learning emancipatory learning these are new terms what is transformational learning what is emancipatory learning we will see them that's the purpose of this lecture emancipatory learning you can see the picture very clearly explaining you are self fueling yourself when learners can examine what brought them to the point of examining and they can question the position values and power of not only themselves but also of their group this is called emancipatory they are they are this is this is one sort of self reflection learners can examining what brought them to this position why i am sitting here why i am in this position why what should i do so this emancipatory learning is possible in adults and the key components of sdl is educator is a facilitator this is what is very important we should understand in sdl the teacher is just a facilitator he has to identify the learning needs develop the learning objectives identify the appropriate resources i can say if you want to learn anything go to this particular site i also can say please don't go into this site an implementation of the process the commitment to a learning contract learning is a contract it's a beautiful contract that is the wonderful thing when a student joins mbbs he is putting a contract with science 
I could see many of the time students are saying, is this needed? Will this come in the exam? Will this in the exam point of view? And when we are want to discuss them about something, they say, ah, this, this block is already over. I don't want to learn about it. That attitude should change. There is a scope for that attitude to change in SDL because it is a contract with science. An evaluation of the learning process. These are the components of the SDL. So there are many stages by which SDL will go. First is the dependent learner. This is a dependent learner, maybe a younger aged person, dependent authority, a coach has to be there. Coaching with immediate back, drill, informational lecture will be there, overcoming deficiencies and resistance. So this is the dependent learner, stage one of the learner. And then comes stage two, obviously, the interested learner. The motivated learner, he wants somebody to motivate him, a guide to say, okay, go to Guyton, take Guyton. Guyton is a doctor who worked in cardiovascular physiology in the United States of America. He had 10 children. All the 10 children are doctors. So that is the greatness of Guyton. So when I say about this, the students get, oh, Guyton, such a great doctor. When they go to Google Scholar, they search all the research articles written by Guyton. So author C. Guyton has written research articles, he has written a textbook, and now this, the role of a teacher is go to Guyton because who is, I used to show the photographs of Guyton, author C. Guyton, I used to show him, so they get motivated to read the book, that is what I can do. So inspiring lecture plus guided discussion, goal setting and learning strategies. Okay, that is about, then gets the involved learner. The third stage is the involved learner. So now a facilitator is needed. Discussion is facilitated by teacher who participates as equal, the seminar, group projects, and all those things will go. And finally comes the self-directed learner. The first is a dependent learner, then the interested learner, then the involved learner, and finally comes the self-directed learner. He does not essentially require the teacher. So the self-directed will be a consultant, a delegator alone is required for him. Internship, dissertation, individual work or self-directed study group. So in dissertation, as postgraduates, all the undergraduates who are listening this lecture should understand the life of a postgraduate. When you become a postgraduate, you will be in yourself. Nobody will help you. You have to take the thesis and run from post to post and you have to completely do and complete it. So that is the beauty of self-directed learning. So the, the, the medical education unit is giving this concept of SDL to make you prepared for a successful post-graduation and a meaningful undergraduation. The stage one is dependent, stage two is interested, stage three is involved, and stage four is self-directed learning. Students have to glide across from one level to another level to become successful learners. So now comes the responsibility gradually shifts to the learner. You are responsible now. You become your own manager. You control your process. You develop, you reflect, and you have to solve the problems and manage your skills and decision making. You have to do by yourself. You have to move your own coins. That is in CSDL. So advantages, time management skills you will get. Helps to identify the requirements of problem solving. How to, how to solve a problem? What are the requirements? How to, how to increase the self-esteem. The most important thing for a student is self-esteem. You should be proud that you are a doctor. When you are proud to be a doctor, you can really do grow many things. Helps in decision making. You should be having self-awareness. You should be aware of who you are. Very important. How the, this, this empowers, it gives independence. First of all, the teacher is, is moving away from you. You are getting independence. It involves a continual process of self-motivation, self-management, self-monitoring, and self-modification. You are plasticity is developing within you. So this causes self-management. What is this? Clear goals. When you are involved in STL, you will get your clear goals. You will start gathering information. When I say read Guyton, you will also go into Genong. Because you know, something is more. When you, whenever you search Guyton, you feel some references and you go to Genong. So you gather information. You have a persistent stay with the task and systematic approach you will develop to for problem solving when you do SDL. Increased organizational planning and decision making will develop within you. You will become more articulate, thoughtful in your communication. The SDL causes increased self-monitoring skills. When SDL leads to consideration of ramifications, thought plans, decisions, and actions, it causes increased metacognition. What is metacognition? The process of consciously monitoring one's own thinking. When you are thinking, you should know what you are thinking. Many times we don't know what we are thinking. They'll be just blank looking at it. This is the reason accidents used to happen. 
So, okay, metacognition is a process of consciously monitoring your own thinking and the self-reflection, process of reflecting on one's own thinking. For example, in SDL, if I'm reading for three hours, I have to close the book. I have to th think within myself. What did I read? In this three hours, what a new material I have understood. So that self-reflection comes in uh, your uh, SDL. And increased patterns and plans, decisions, and actions, everything will come. Self-evaluation, self-modification will happen because of this. Increase self-efficacy, clear goal setting, desired outcome, corrective feedback is possible. Students give an opportunity to reflect on their learning. What do you mean by corrective feedback? For example, if I want the answer for a particular question, I'm going into a textbook of, by, for example, in internal medicine, I'm reading the textbook of uh, internal medicine by Harrison. When I'm reading more than 10 pages, I wanted to know something, uh, the, the goal of why I started reading this book and where is the content going on? I will get an idea. I will have a corrective feedback. I'll say, okay, this chapter is not going to give me the answer. I have to go to the next chapter. So this corrective feedback will be learning when you are doing SD. But the problem is we don't read the textbooks. We don't open the textbooks. When you don't open the textbooks, the scope of SDL becomes very less. And uh, SDL causes constructivism. There is a beautiful word, constructivism. What is constructivism? Are we going to construct a building? Yes, we are going to construct a building in the mind. Can construct own knowledge based on previous knowledge. Something we learn and again we learn, we built upon it. So we construct a building, a building of knowledge, uh, a beautiful, a, a, a beautiful, uh, a beautiful a conglomeration of ideas we put into our mind. Learning is an active process in SDL. It is not a passive process. When you are taking your lectures, students used to sit like that. Sometimes they may be sleepy also. What the cell phones is only keeping them to be awake. Otherwise, if you switch off the phone, they will go to sleep sleep. So what happens is the learning becomes a passive process, but in SDL it is an active process. The learners make judgments about when, how to modify their knowledge. They know when to modify. That is a beautiful thing. And uh, particularly from a medical point of view, it causes transformative learning. This is very important. Transformative learner finds the presumptions to be wrong. For example, a surgeon will have an idea in his mind. He will have a fixed idea. But when he is understanding that this is wrong, it will be wrong at dysfunctional, adopts a new role, practice new skills, and it, because it's called transformative learning. You cannot be rigid in SDL. In SDL, you will get, you will slowly get into transformational learning because you are learning by yourselves. For example, if you have a fixed thought, and I'm going to give one more uh, idea for you. You say, Dr. Mustafa, don't give me this idea because I, I, can, I cannot take more than two ideas. But if you, do SDL, all the two ideas are coming by yourselves. You are the you are the manager. You brought these two ideas, so you will accept them. Your mind will be able to accept them. Experimental methods by role play, games, simulations, clinics, field works, everything will go transformative learning. We used to say when a person is very rude in the road, in the traffic, for example, in a traffic, you can see two people in the highway between uh, Chakra and Riyadh. There is an accident. One fellow is shouting and another fellow. And you came to know that one person is a doctor or an engineer. You say, you are a learned man. Why did you do? So what is, are we teaching in medical school not to fight in the road? But what happens is, as you get educated as a doctor, you will become transformed. This is called transformed learning. The world expects nobility from doctors because they expect the students would have been transformed into noble doctors when they learn medicine. So this DL gives a scope for transform, uh, transform uh, th this kind of uh, learning. So neurological, neurological priming. So what is the teacher supposed to do? Deciding what knowledge to and what skill to learn, deciding the specific activity, method, resource, equipment needed. I can give given advices and ideas, deciding where to learn, specific uh, deadlines, or I can say, uh, I can only say as a facilitator, okay, you have to finish this topic within three days. Like that, deciding when to begin a learning episode, deciding the pace to proceed during the learning episode. I can say, don't go very fast, go slowly, step by step. So that is the role of the teacher in SDL. Okay. And now the neurological priming. Furthermore, we can say estimating the current level of knowledge. As a teacher, I can, if you want to go and read, I will be saying, okay, let us go for a discussion. How much you know about physiology? I will understand the level of your physiological knowledge. And then I can say how much you should go further up. Detecting the factors that has been that backing or hindering. What is the factors that is giving a problem? You have to understand and the priming has to be done by the teacher. Obtaining the desired resources and equipment, preparing and adapting a room. Sometimes in your 
your home there are three to four rooms and by trial and error you will understand which room is going to suit you better for stl and nobody no textbooks or no teachers will be able to advise you in that saving or obtaining a money needed for human or non human resource and finding time for learning and taking steps for motivation and learning and positive impact this is we are going to see the positive impact of sdl on the human brain how what is the beauty of doing the sdl what i what is better learning from a teacher and learning by ourselves what is the beauty of being a self directed learning it gives you motivation persistent neurological changes will happen independence is there self discipline self confident goal oriented life you become more aware and you become more responsible you have a meaningful learning you encourage your student to develop their own rules and leadership changes and what you read by sdl is deep and permanent neural change between the neurons so that is very important whatever i will teach students may listen i don't know how they are going to take it is in them but if you learn by yourselves the neurons are going to entangle it in a very sensible way so the differences from the traditional learning and sdl memory and coding what is that and memorizing new facts and teachers determines a sequence and timings of study items for example i will decide my lecture is at 9 i will decide my lecture is at 1 but the student wants to learn that topic at morning but there is no scope so this is a traditional way i say this is the time come for the class otherwise you are absent but in sdl you can read at any moment okay so we are going to the next slide but in sdl the learner makes the decisions about how to study and amount of time spent in studying for example in a particular theory he will spend more time in one particular theory he will spend less time so this is decided by sdl the problems but saying all the good things i have to say what is the problem in sdl also some adults cannot engage in sdl as they have decreased independence decreased confidence decreased resources for example if a student is really not interested to download any textbook or buy any textbook or don't want to go to the library and open any textbook then sdl will be a failure because he doesn't have the resource okay all that you see sdl he will do is again going and opening the books which is uh, the powerpoints which is uh, he has and the few slides he will see again and again this is not sdl sdl will cause error and may misguide the student how to learn student may be combined still may be combined with other learning methods more time consuming if you are not priming properly the team spirit is reduced this is a disadvantage which i should always make it very clear sdl has a disadvantage the team spirit is not that because you are alone okay how the teacher can now increase when i say what are the good things what are the parts of the adult brain and how the sdl happens in an adult everything i have said now i have to say how can i make it successful that is the role of a teacher the medical education unit is striving its utmost all its efforts to make the sdl successful so what we in medical education unit we do is we motivate the students we set a feeling for learning we fix an appropriate level of concern for them the student counseling concept is such a wonderful concept we call them what is your problem sit down you are in total privacy we talk to them so this is fixing the problem and fix an appropriate level of difficulty for them so we slowly increase the level of difficulty so this is how the educators can increase the knowledge base and the orientation of the students towards sdl and more we can say about it learner should be enthusiastic my dear students if you don't have enthusiasm we can't do anything about it the fire to learn should be from within not from without it should be from within you the material should be available and appropriate with you you have to put the print outs you have to download the content you have to buy the books or you have to take it from the central library one of the most beautiful and extravagant library is available in our chakra university campus you have to take that and you have to read it guide or adviser should be available only if needed learner should be physically mentally healthy the learner should be able to select the tools and methods student should know the technology learn about the technology you should not say i don't know how to use zoom you have to learn it because i learn it so the collaborative working has to be practiced collaboration between the teacher and the student so the demands of the adult brain is that they want to uh, this we have seen already we have seen already these slides why is sdl most is uh, important for a medical point of view now the question educator can be a facilitator identifying the learning needs for example what is the role of a teacher today is 2020 if a student wants to learn so many things i can say wait wait corona 
reading about microbiology reading about viruses reading about immunization reading about vaccines they are very important for you so i can identify the learning needs developing learning objectives i can give you identify the resources and implement the process and increase the uh, increase commitment of learning contract so in medical education most interesting point now let us come into the heart of the problem sdl is a deep permanent learning i said in previous slides it's a long lasting influence i have said okay but in medicine too much is there really there is too much in medline alone 14 million citations are there if you start reading it you will become 100 years old so 14 million citations are there and recent clinical advances will continuously happen and the brain capacity also reduces as you get older your brain capacity goes down and knowledge is inversely correlates with the uh, years in certification they have seen 15 years after obtaining degree a person will lose a lot of knowledge because his brain gets worn out so this is the reason sdl should be that how how this is going to help because you are going to do a permanent change and there are so much uh, citations you need to the teacher will teach you how to pick the best for example if you ask me which is the most uh, most stable and most reliable i say go to the lancet but when you browse you will go to some site some uh, predatory journal i will say don't go to this predatory journal go to lancet so like that you can reduce and this sdl gives you the knowledge and skill to do it but so this is the reason sdl is very important in medical education sdl is a promising methodology for lifelong learning and another interesting point which comes in your uh, when you in your way the textbook and review articles they have a problem you know what is the problem a new item will have make many years to enter into for example you cannot ex if you open your book harrisons and in 2001 january you open your harrison you will not see everything about corona there there are hundreds and thousands of research articles about corona but to enter into harrisons book it will take long time they have to review it again and again the scientific credibility has to be there then only it will go into it so it has a problem review articles also have a problem many articles are withdrawn after a long lot number of times because something is wrong within them so they will have that lagging of chronological time is there they may have some discrepancy while the the if you take uh, uh, the textbooks of medicine the various textbooks from the davidson and harrison you can see some small discrepancy in the concepts and ideas in the workout so the cme is also is not going to change the behavior of doctors many times we say we go to cme we have learning nothing we have learning because the cme is not going to way change your behavior cme is not going to increase or change the patient outcome which you do also so in it is not generally based on learners needs we want to know about something but the speaker will speak something else so sdl is the ideal solution for all of these so finally i conclude sdl what is sdl so far the teacher is holding your hands is taking you across the terrain of knowledge but when the medical student becomes a doctor he is all alone you have a nurse you have a pharmacist and you have the ancillary persons around you you cannot go and ask any question or any doubts you cannot page your teacher when you are in emergency so you should know the art of self directed learning you should be prepared for example when you are in intensive care ward and when the ambulance in your hospital rushes into the city of riyadh you will ask what is the issue they say there is a injury to the chest a compression chest trauma in a car accident and they will say within 8 minutes the ambulance will return with the injured person to the icu so now you are the doctor in the icu now in this 8 minutes don't expect mustafa will come and teach you don't expect any teacher in this world will come and teach you you should have the skill of self directed learning you should know which book and things about trauma to the chest and how to search for it which side to chest and what is the latest to washington manuals advice for it you should know what to do you should immediately go for sdl use all your experience in self directed learning in the 8 minutes you will be priming your mind and be ready when the ambulance arrives and the ambulance door is open when the patient is rushing to the intensive care ward as a successful doctor you will be there receiving the patient so this is self directed learning what is needed you learn what is deciding what you learn the accident from the accident site the injury if the injury is in the head you have to read about head if the injury is in the chest you have to read about your chest 
so what you are going to be primed in those 8 minutes when the ambulance comes you have to have the skill and this is called self directed learning so we teach you slowly slowly to know what is sdl how to do sdl so when you are in the good in the art of sdl you will be successful doctors may god bless all the students uh, thank you for all the persons who are patiently listening to this uh, lecture uh, thank you very much and uh, now uh, we can answer some questions if i know the answer Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mustafa Simal, for this excellent presentation. Thank you you make everything clear for uh, this important subject, and we have to appreciate what you are done. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, sir, for the wonderful opportunity, and thanks to all my colleagues and students for uh, attending the event. Shall we close the session, sir? If anyone has the questions. Thank you, Dr. Mustafa. Thank you, Professor Sir. Thank you so much. Thank you for attending. Okay, let us close it. Thank you, Rash. Thanks, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Salam.